Crafters, it's me, Jen Evers, with Koality Crafts. <clears throat> if you're new to my channel, this is Free Play Friday. So those of you guys who work all week, and I, I work most of the week, happy Friday. Congratulations, you made it. I have to make a little couple of tweaks here. Um, what we're going to create today are cards made with vellum. And I'm buffering on one end. So anybody that's there, let me know if you're having any issues. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Ready? So I've got some vellum here. And then I'm also going to use white cardstock because we're not going to make the all of the bases just vellum. And I've got three different cards that have vellum on there, on there somewhere. We're going to try to reinvent these cards. Maybe they'll turn out exactly the same. Maybe not. <laughs> you had to jump through hoops just to get here? Well, I just sent the reminder. Should be about 15 minutes beforehand, but if you guys need me to send them out earlier, I can. I think I also have on the um, the autofocus, yeah. See it breathing? This used to work really well. I don't know what happened to it. But anyway, these are the three. So the flower is vellum. The leaves are vellum. And I think that's about it on this one. And then this one, the flower and the leaves are also vellum. Okay. And then this one jumps into a card that's like all vellum. But you can tell that I didn't, um, like, I used a little bit of heat and different things on here. So mine turned out a little wonky. If you can see, they're not straight. But if you stand it up, it still stands up perfectly fine. Now, everything is vellum on here. There's a thing on the back. See how wonky it is? I guess you have to be really careful. I'll use ATG tape today. Don't try not to use wet glues. With this, unless you're using a very thin line, that works out really well. Um, also, another thing is if you... I just want to get a couple tips and tricks out of the way, if you don't mind. Um, if you blah, blah, emboss on a vellum and then you do a lot of different things to it, like when I, when I did do the embossing on here, it kind of curled up and I wanted it to lay a little bit flatter. Um, so I did the little trick where you run it on the edge of the of the table or the desk and um, some of the embossing powder started to flake off so in order to fix that problem you probably can't even tell in here because it all looks kind of wonky um, all I did was after it completely dried and sat for a while I used this Dilusions white linen white linen paint paint pen guys I've always 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 pushed the um the white gel pen by Signal, the Uniball Signal White Gel Pen. Now, while I, I still swear by this gel pen, this paint pen is also amazing. I totally love this. Um, Dilutions White Linen. So if you want to get a couple of these, we'll put those in the store. Just let us know. But these are amazing. And if we have some mistakes and stuff, um, I'll show you how to use this. If you're going to use it on anything that's already laid down, like inks and stuff, make sure it's well dry because it will soak up the color of the ink and stuff and so if you're trying to get on a white note on top of like a red heart you're going to get a pink note <laughs> just make sure you dry it really fully and we're showcasing the gina k through thick and thin stamp set today while we do this that's where all the little flowers and the leaves came from cute right and then thanks for always being there best friends forever and you've been my friend through thick and thin hence the title thick and thin so cool. Penny, I hope we'll um, be able to help you out with the price points and stuff while I keep moving. Now, this is a sale weekend, so tonight is a patron only. If you're wondering, what the heck is patron? Like, I'm new here. Um, Patreon, Patreon is um, a platform that you can join that will help our community, and you get to decide however much um, of a donation you want to make per month. And then when you sign up for it, you get put into our special patron only group that gets different discounts, um, free digis and things like that, that the norm community community would not normally get. So you get perks and fun things. Okay. So, um, and we have a goal for that by 2020 in January, we would love to have 100 people in that community. And then we're going to start doing giveaways there once a month, a big giveaway. So if you like new things that are coming out, you want to be a part of that. That'd be really cool. All right, so here I did a little bit of foiling. You're going to see a lot of neat stuff today. 
first of all, I'm going to start out by doing the embossing on the vellum. And I'm going to use this stamp set by Gina K through thick and thin. And we're going to use this gorgeous flower. Totally love it. And I'm going to use stays on. No, I'm not. I'm going to use Versamark. What am I saying? Stays on if you don't want the raised embossing. Stays on is your best bet or any kind of an archival ink that's going to stay. So if we do one that doesn't have embossing, I'm going to use this. But on the whole, I'm going to use the Versamark, which is right above me. It's just a clear ink that's going to make everything wet so that your embossing powder sticks to it. Alrighty. Does anybody have any questions so far? Let me know. Oh, and I forgot to mention on that whole little tangent on woo, um, when I was talking about Patreon, um, what did I want to say about that? My mind is like on so many tracks, you guys, like we lost heat and we have to get a whole new furnace and I had to go to the doctor today and I'm perfectly fine. Everything's grand. So don't get it. Don't get your undies in a bunch. <laughs> It's just been a lot. And then the furnace is coming in. So I have to move everything out. But I can only move the stuff that was not going to be in my way for my video. And then after they put that in on Monday, then I have to move everything back. Oh, it's going to be a it's going to be a fast week next week. Because then we have family coming from his side. And then we have my mom coming. Girls, ladies, men, crafters. It's going to be a yeehaw weekend. Giddy up. We got lots to do. Thank goodness I have a lady who comes and cleans my house when I need her to. She'll just come over and just help me with all kinds of stuff. She's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm way off track today. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, and get this done. Now, I did the other ones in white. You see that I did it all in, like, white? You can do whatever you want with that. You don't have to do white. You can do white. I actually sprayed these flowers, too. So maybe while I'm doing this part, you guys can decide, how do you want these colored? Do you want to use Copic markers, or do you want to see me put sprays on it? You choose. Copic markers or sprays to color the flowers. And I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I mean, you know what? I'm going to do a couple of them in stays on, so there's not a, like, poofy part, you know? Just flat black. And see how that looks. Because I've not done that yet. I'm going to try that. I see one for Copic markers. I see two for sprays. Ooh, that turned out pretty dang sweet. Ooh, I see a whole bunch of sprays. I think sprays are winning. I think we might be able to get both, to be honest. And then, oh man, look at how pretty that looks. Let's do one more. <laughs> and then we'll do a couple of the Versamark ones too, I promise. But that looks, just looks so nice. You don't have to do things in colors. You can do them black and white. Whatever you want to do, it's going to look just as pretty. That's so cool. All right. I know this isn't going to come off completely, but I'm just going to take a baby wipe and walk. Wipe off a little bit of that because stays on stains and that's no big, no big deal. See, like just a little bit's coming off. No big deal. I could get my alcohol out and my stays on cleaner, but I, you know what? It's stained. I, I don't mind. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to emboss these. I want to make sure I have, I did white last time. Oh, let's try a silver instead of white this time. I think the silver is going to look really pretty. Maybe we'll do one silver and one white. So I'm switching from the stays on to that clear ink because it's going to be sticky to make this stuff stick to it. And I'm going to use my static bag because I get in trouble when I don't. I'm going to put a little bit on there and rub it around. And then because these are probably not dry, I'm going to dump it this way so that it doesn't get all over the ones I just did. There he is. All right, there's one. Two. But some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Okay. That's how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Three. Looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and add some powder. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to try going this way. So we don't get that powder on the ones that we just want black and white. I didn't really do placement on this very well, did I? There we go. That looks nice. Now, because we're uh, going to emboss on pow on duh vellum, hello. Um. I'm going to try to cut off the ones that were not heat setting. All right, I'm going to cut off these. Because I don't want any more of that paper, the vellum, to curl up. If you don't heat it, it's not going to curl on you. So that's a good that's a good sign. That's a good point. And then these need to be heated to set that silver. I'm going to let it heat up first because the less time you have that heat on the vellum, hopefully the less curling you'll get. But, you know, start from the t I get impatient and I just go straight in and then I get curls. So up to you. Slower is better. Those turned out so pretty. Look at that. And you can heat from under, like let's say I just cut off and I did one and it was really warping. Heat from the underside too so it warps back the other way. That'll help. That'll help as well. So let's go ahead and cut this in a strip just to see how much curling we really got. Not too bad. I think as long as we don't put a lot more heat on there, we might get some really smooth applications with that. All right, now these. Let's just see how that, that feels pretty darn dry to me. It should dry relatively fast. The stays on really should. But if it still feels sticky or tacky to you, let it sit for a few more minutes, okay? So we're going to use the silver ones with some color, some spray behind it. We'll also do one with Copics. Same with these. Okay, so I will do, let's say... I'll save one of these for Copics and one of these for Copics. And then maybe we'll do two of them with sprays and then we'll save two. Maybe we want to try to do a couple that are just black and white. Okay, so let's do the sprays first. So two for the sprays. Let me slide these over. All right, the paint pens come in packs of two, black and white. So here's what the black one looks like. If you guys are interested in that, there's a little um, video by, I always, I always forget her name. She makes the station, Vecchi, Wendy Vecchi. Um, she will, there's a little video out there that shows you how to do it, but I could show you how to do it too. You just have to make sure that you shake it, shake it, shake it really well, and then push it down and leave it down for a long time. It's going to feel like eternity. <laughs> and then lift it up 
push it down, lift it up. When you start seeing it come out, then you're all good to go. It's primed. I know this from experience because I tried to start mine and I was like, what's going on? But anyway, they're awesome. So highly recommend them. Let's grab the, I keep digressing here. Let's grab the um, spray box. And mine is all messy, but you guys know that. So when we spray, we are not spraying on the side that we stamped or the side that we uh, embossed. We're going to flip them over and spray the other side. And I'm going to do one at a time because I don't want them both the same color. But I might want this one to be like orange. That'd be cool. Ooh, how about like a red and an orange? That would be pretty. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to use, this isn't quite an orange, it's a lemon, lemon zest and peony blush. The names of these are so tiny, I can hardly see them. Then it takes me a second to get these open. Of course, I accidentally chose two that were, that have never been used, so... This is how I tend to open mine. Get a little um, piece going at the top that you can tear. I need a smaller scissor. And then just tear the whole plastic piece off. If you guys have um, quicker ways of doing this, let me know. But see, if you do that and then just make a piece that'll tear, then you can just go ahead and pull the whole thing off. Pull, pull, pull until it circles around. Okay, so you can get your cap off. Same thing with this one. I'm just going to get it stretched out on one side. I'm going to put my teeny tiny scissor in there and then cut it so that I can grab that and pull it until it gets to the point where I can get my cap off. And then these are the same um, as we've used before. The di I'm just using the dilutions today. So the, these are the shimmer spray. So I'm going to shake them up from side to side. We're trying to get all that stuff on the bottom, that pink part and that yellow part sorted out through the thing. Do not shake them up and down. You don't want to force that stuff into your little straw. But one thing you can do that I found works really well is back and forth. So all I'm doing is rolling it back and forth like this really fast. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's do this one. I'm going to do... I'm going to do the um, peony blush and then the lemon. So here goes peony. Ooh, look at that. And here's the lemon zest. Ooh. Oh, that's going to look so cool from the front. Um, this is another thing, too, that's going to curl up your paper. You could dab it off. You could heat set it a little bit so it just kind of relaxes down. Both of those will work as well. I don't know that I really wanted to zap mine down because I want to keep that color. You could also tape it down too if you want, but I don't have a, my, my, my mat or my box is not something that I want to do. I want to be able to flip this over real quick and show you guys. From the other side look at all the color you get so pretty you can get in there and you can move that around with a brush if you want you can do a splat on the box if you want let's go ahead and do um a little bit of heat and see if we can get that to settle down a little bit Those of you guys who have my uh, the same heart that I do are like, yeah, I uh, like the Copic markers better because you don't have to worry about that stuff. But those of you guys who like really had to get your hands into your art, you're going to love this. I think what I'm going to do is just pull this one off of here and let the rest of those little puddles dry. And we're going to do another one. Just zap another one. So this one is 
that was black. This one is the silver one, so we're going to flip that over so we're not spraying our silver side. And we're going to do, I think we'll make that one a blue one. This time I'm going to use a Distress Oxide, which is broken china. And like Tim Holtz says, just put something over the top and give it a really good shake. And nothing really came out of it, but that protects your top, your cover from getting those, um, all that ink like trapped in your cover and stuff. So here we go. That's one light spray. Remember, if you're using oxide sprays and you add water to it, it's going to oxidize. And then you're going to have a lighter color than what you originally wanted. But I'm going super light on this one. Okay, so this one I didn't add as much ink to. I did a couple of smaller layers. I heated it from a little bit higher. But do you see how it's starting to curl up a bit? You don't want to manipulate this too much because this is the one that has the embossing powder on. And that will start to um, fall off if you're rubbing it on the um, side of the desk and stuff. I'm going to set that one to dry. Why did I say I was going to do two of each? I think two of each will be good. So coloring it with the Copic markers is super easy. You just want to make sure that you're doing the same thing, coloring it on the opposite side that you embossed on or the opposite side that you stamped your ink on. So two more. Let's do um, some Copic markers or alcohol markers in general. doesn't matter which ones you use. It really doesn't. If you want to do it really, really slow and you want um, some fabulous color on the outside, uh, some really bright color, you could color on the side that you have your embossing and stamping on. But if you don't mind a little bit more of a muted tone, you have a lot more forgiveness when you do it on the back. Because the back then you can just scribble and then cut around the edge and it's no big deal. I'll show you one of each. I wish I had a couple more purples. So I have this light purple I'm going to do. I'm going to do it on the back of this one. I'm going to go ahead and just scribble. I'm scribbling on most of the leaves. Or I mean, the most of the petal, petal parts around it. And then there's like a little bit more on the inside. You can decide whether you want it to be like real or comic-like comic like or whatever. So that was purple. I'll do a little bit darker of a pink now so you can see the difference. Oh, that one's a really bright one. Ooh, look at that. We're going to do that all in the middle here. So when I flip it over, you can see the difference between... Look at that. Where's my white? Because that's going to be hard to see. Look at that. So we've got purple and pink. Do you see how it muted the color a lot? Now, when I'm here, I can totally see that purple. But when it's on camera, it's really hard to see. But if we let it dry, or if I had a deeper purple, let's try one of the um, Copics. Not Copics. Um, this is one of my Spectrum Noirs. I'm going to go ahead and put some of that Spectrum Noir. Ooh, now look at that purple. Oh, my goodness. We're going to do a bunch of just where I put that other purple. That's going to dry pretty darn fast and look at the brightness we get there. Let's do oh, another brighter pink. Ooh, let's try this one. It's almost a purple. It might look like a purple. That's okay though. I'm going to go into the other color just so that they blend around just the edges there. So we don't have any harsh lines. Look at that. So pretty. And they look really gorgeous after they've been cut out. You've seen the cards, right? 
me show them one more time for people that maybe just came in. See how they're curled up? It's because I sprayed that one and it curled, curled quite a bit. This one was sprayed from behind as well. I can tell because I can see some of the drips on the back. See the little splatters up here? Dun, dun, dun. DSLR in my future. That's gonna be awesome. I gotta take a sweatshirt off. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. It's getting kind of hot in here, so it's happening. Sheesh. All right. So we have, we have another one. So we already did purple, blue, and like red and orange. Look at how pretty that looks on the vellum. If you don't want to stamp anything, you can just spray that that um, shimmer spray right on your vellum. Oh, it's gorgeous. From, from the other side, you get that that pretty, um, what do you call it? Yeah, I almost would want to do that in like a, a rainbow color. So cool. All right, so that one. And then this one was the one that I did real lightly in blue. See how pretty that is, that pale blue? That look that one's gonna look similar to this one, only even a, oops, even a little bit more pale. This is gonna be another one. Let's see, we did pink. Oops, there's my purple one. We did purple, blue, orange, and we should we could do one more color. What's the other one I did? Oh, I already did that orange one. We already did purple and blue. I hate to do a green one. What else can we do? Like really orange? No, I got an orange one. How about just totally red? Let's go red. This one I'm going to show you that you can get really detailed if you want. So let's go ahead and grab kind of an orangey red and a super deep red, which is my DR4. So I'm going to use the R29 lipstick red and then the DR4 in the Spectrum Noir. And this one is a little bit, this one's the, not as dark. It's a little bit lighter of a shade. So I'm going to use this one to go in here. And now I'm trying not to color on the embossing part. So if you really like to color, this would be a fun thing for you to do. It takes a lot of patience. And the reason why I'm trying not to, you know, go crazy and go over the embossing is because <clears throat> let's say we embossed this in, in white, which I did with the other ones. Anywhere you touch that with your um, alcohol marker, it's going to, it's going to stain the white embossing that you just put down. So that kind of, um, that would kind of defeat the purpose, but you can do this. You can color it in between the embossing. You can get another different look. I'm actually um, coloring on the side that I stamped on because I wanted a darker version of that. So now I'm going to take the Spectrum Noir um, DR4, which is a darker one, and I'm going to try to go over the top of it and we'll get a little bit of a transition here from really dark on the edges to a little bit um, not quite as dark towards the inside. You can totally see that difference there, I think. Vellum is not really easy to um, go through and do a lot of mixing because it just keeps kind of pushing that ink around. But it's just up to you. Make your card the way you want it, the way you like it. So that one's kind of a watercolory looking. I like that one too. I'm not going to finish this one just because that's going to take me a long time to color it. But give it a shot if that's something that you like. It's pretty cool. Play around with other mediums too. Just know that um, they're going to work out differently depending because vellum is not the same as working on paper. Oh, so you said you weren't fond of the sprayed ones. Let me show you that other one again. This one is also sprayed. If I can get it to clear up for you, that'd be grand. You can see a few of the spots on the edge, 
but for the most part this was completely filled in totally up to you if you spray more you get more color if you do drips then you'll get a drippy look okay okay i think we're good we have a couple of extra i can't remember what i was gonna do but we did sprays and we did um some copic markers maybe i'll just save these in case there's another idea you guys want to try out we got two two left over but we got plenty to do um i really like this one this one's my favorite so how about this one d this one is sprayed but also one color a very very light blue i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this one out now if you don't have to spend a lot of time going on the very edge if you just do a cut around the edges like really close like i'm doing and you know quickly then it doesn't take as long but if you want something that's super specific and it's cut right on the edge then just take a little bit more time and do that the best you can okay so that's pretty the blue the light blue with the silver gorgeous the alcohol markers they dry really fast so we can cut that one out as well so we we have vellum here we just don't have it in the shop yet we just it just arrived Ooh, and those of you guys who have been waiting for pre-orders um penny help me out what did we get in pre-order this time we got in I always want to say it's, I always want to say it by the company name, but a lot of the Tim Holtz Christmas stuff is here. Some of the stuff we've been waiting on. I'm trying not to do the whole outside real specific, just around the edges. Very pretty. We've got a purple one. Tim Holtz, wow! <laughs> this one looks like it came through the paper. How interesting is that? Let's go ahead and cut this out and see what we got left at the end. You could even put that whole thing right on a card if you don't want to cut it out. I like the splatters. I love the way those two mix. So we got a little bit of like three different colors in here. So pretty. You can also use these things to mask. So let's say I cut this one out directly over the edges. Then I could stamp one on my paper, put that on top and mask it off. So this one would be like my just extra guy and it would get dirty. And then I could spray it so that there's spray all around and then pull this off so that would stay exactly the way it is. That's another fun technique. You don't have to have vellum to do that. Obviously you can use whatever papers you have. The less ink you put on it, the less rolling up you're going to get. So a lot of these turned out relatively flat, and I like that. That looks really cool. Oh, it's in the store. Go Penny. Go Penny. Penny is the bomb, you guys. Penny the bomb. Okay. So those, we're going we're gonna to shoot for three. Hopefully we can get three done. My vellum is pretty thin. It's not super heavy. I think this one is, see, now look, I, I manipulated that a bunch and a little piece of that came up, came off. I'm just going to pull it off because I don't think anyone will see that. I'm going to cut this in half so we can make a card out of it. If you're going to want to do any more embossing and stuff like that, make sure you do all your embossing first, then put the card together. You'll have a lot less warpage than I got like on my other card. So I'm going to make this a whole vellum card, and then we're going to add some paper to make it a little bit more sturdy because this is not very sturdy on its own once we add the embellishments and stuff.
So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and cut this down so that I've got a layer for the inside and a little layer for the front. And that's going to be because we're aiming for something that looks like this. So to make it a little bit stronger, I put a piece on the inside and a piece on the back. But I'm pretty sure I used wet glue because I was in a hurry. Make sure you don't use wet glue if you can avoid it because you'll have less rumpling. And then on the back of this one, I put a... That's where the flower sat. To cover that up, I put a little round piece of white paper and a sticker that says, Live Life in Full Bloom. Okay, so these... This one, I just added a little thin strip of glue. And although it got a little bit warpy, you can't see the glue. This is another way to hide it. So if you can put a piece of white on the back of it, that'll hide it, the glue. And then the big piece right here and right here, that's another way. Put one on each side and sandwich them together. You won't see the glue. some other things too like I'm thinking with this splatter one maybe we can add like colored one that we've done recently remember when we did this one not too long ago wouldn't that piece of it look fantastic on there let's go ahead and use some of that I was thinking maybe this one but that one doesn't quite match but this one does this one totally does So I could put that right here and pop him up. If I put a piece of white under him, then his colors will pop out a little bit more. Do you see the difference in that? The bright color versus it gets muddied when it's on top of that one. So I may put that on there. But I know I want a piece on here. So let's go ahead and use our ATG gun. First, I'm going to put this down. And we can put a strip across the back, too, if you're worried about that showing. way down there. So I'm going to tack that down on my white and then I'm going to go ahead and cut around it. Ah, Barbara, you saw the vellum butterflies? Those turned out so cool, didn't they? should probably link that down in this one, shouldn't I? And then I'm just going to make it real Real close around the edge, but not perfect. That'll help a lot. Your card will go quicker. What time is it? 5.30? Okay. We have to make time for me to set up for the patron sale. And if you're not a patron, we'd love you to join. We'd like to get two or 100 patrons by the new year in January. If we do that, we're going to start doing giveaways on that channel. then it stands out a little better. Do you see that? Cute. We didn't even do any, um, we didn't even do any leaves yet, but we will. We will make time for leaves. I need some puffy tape. Ooh, glad I didn't move my camera. Almost. Chillax. I'm just going to use one real quick to put it on here.
already starting to buckle up a little bit. See that? Oh, because I got it wet. Don't get yours wet. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do a little blast of heat on there. Not a lot. Oh, wrong guy. Sizzix. There we go. A little bit of heat on there to flatten her out. That's that looks pretty all just by itself. I maybe want to put a some glitter on there, some glitz or sequins maybe. I love that one. I should probably put a bar across the inside as well. See how big this one is. Ooh, that'll give us a nice white background too. Look how pretty that is. You could even cut over, do a little edge cutter. I'm not gonna do that today though, but I'm, I'm gonna get this in here. I'm going to line it up this way so that I can see it on the edge and I know where it's going. And then I'm going to hold on to it and push it onto the back. So that gives you a see-through card, but you have within this space, in the middle of this space, to write your little sentiment or stamp a sentiment or whatever you want to do. And then we could add, we could add some... Um, Leaves, where did I put that little guy? Now it depends on what you want to pull out as being brighter or being more of a focal point. If you want the leaves to be a little bit more subdued, then do them on the vellum. If you want them to stand out a lot more, then go ahead and stamp them like on a green or on a white and then color them. I'm gonna try to do just a couple on a piece of white so we can see the difference because we've already seen how they look on the cards here. I'm gonna show them one more time. So those are vellum, and they've been colored with Copic on the other side. These as well. I think I did them all the same way. Two different colors of green on the opposite side with Copics. A light one and a dark one to make it look like it has a little bit of a transition. But this one, let's make a couple of leaves on just the white paper and see what kind of a look we get with that. I think I'm going to do them just black because this one has just the black on it. And we're going to do versifying for this one. Too close. There we go. I'm going to clean off my stamp. And then we'll cut these out. We have to decide what we want to color these with. I'm thinking since this is such kind of a fallish looking, we don't want it to be too out there. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a light green. I had a better choice with my... Where did I put my marker over there? I've had a nice choice with my, mar my Copics of two greens that I like together. I'm going to go ahead and make them with the light green first. I didn't let this dry at all. I should have. It's going to smear just a little bit. Not bad though. Oh no, maybe it didn't. Maybe it did okay. And then I'm going to put on a little bit of that dark green, kind of coming from all of the little marks that it's already made in there. Like a lot of the stamps now are including like the shading parts. 
So you don't even have to be a really good colorist to take advantage of that. So I did that super quick coloring and then we'll go ahead and cut them out. These I am going to try to cut as close to the edge as I can. Another good thing to have on hand if you're going to do this kind of a project and you don't have a lot of white in it is take a black marker that's like a brush marker B for brush and go all the way around the edge and cover up that white it makes a huge difference although when I first saw somebody do that I thought how ridiculous and then I realized how like professionally professional looking like how much clearer and crisper everything looked because I colored that white in it was amazing I was like, whoa, that's so cool. I love it when I can still either give you guys that whoa factor or I find something I think is like, holy cow, and I get to share it with you. I'm always looking. So this one's been inked and this one has not. Probably doesn't make much of a difference on that side of the screen, but on this side of the screen, I can really tell. Oh, that's really pretty. Let's put that like more up towards the top so that you can see it more. Oh, that turned out really nice. Like that. It's been a while since I used this one, apparently. There we go. Just a touch of glue on the back. Pretty. So let's look at the inside here. You can see that those colors coming through. And if you think that looks yucky and you don't like that, then go ahead and trim another white one or trim another flower, whatever you want to cover up and put another panel on the back. But can you see through here that that ATG tape is not showing? really can't see it so let's go ahead and look at that it stands up looks awesome it's so pretty okay let's put that one aside we got time to do another one oh my we're at we're at 10 2 already let's do another one let's do one more I really like this light blue one and you know what that makes me think of makes me think of snowflakes so I'm going to do a snowflake embossing. I hope I can find it because I wasn't prepared to do that one, but that's what caught my eye today. So I'll use this piece as our card base, and then I'll cut one more piece at... Four by five and a quarter. So that one will be just a little bit smaller, and this is the one that I'm going to emboss. that one then we'll, we'll just skip it oh you know what this one this one will this one will do that one looks like one we're gonna go ahead and do it this one this is an Anna Griffin one and just say it's called cherry blossom so we'll just go with that Ready? 
Ooh, look how pretty that turned out. That's amazing. Another tip that I've learned from Tim Holtz this week, if you guys missed that one, this looks extremely deep etched. But on his 3D ones, he sprays his paper. I gotta fix my chair. He sprays his paper, not wetting it down, but just sprays a little bit on the top and the back to make that paper more pliable when he does the 3D ones. And then your paper is a lot less likely to crack and more likely to just mold and create that 3D effect, which is super cool. We're going to go ahead and use this one for the flower. And then I'm going to have to end this one. Bummer, I was hoping we could get through more cards, but I was just having so much fun with that one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. Let's pop that up. Do I have enough here? We also have um, this, this foam tape and other adhesives and ATG, ATG refills for the pink one and the red one made by Scotch. So if you need any adhesives, those are in the store as well. If you're a patron, you get 10% um, off everything you order through the store. Now we're going to put the flower on there. Look how pretty that is. Now I would put something else on there with a the flower. I wouldn't just pop that flower on there all by itself. But since we're running out of time, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pop it up twice. Well, no, just once, because I did already pop up this bottom part. Now, you can see there's white behind that, but it's not super noticeable, right? Makes it a little bit lighter of color where that white is, but it's not too bad. pretty so let's do a quick review before we go the three that I did ahead of time that were on the thumbnail we've got the purple one with the vellum flower got this one with the vellum flower and there's vellum on top of this too just because I already had that vellum sprayed blue and I thought why waste it so I put it on a piece of white cardstock and added that on and then this one is the one that's predominantly vellum with some white on there. This one we used, um, I used an embossing folder. And you remember we did this one in a previous video. We used some rub-ons and stuff. We used some sprays and embossing. And then we used a little part of that to make this card. This card turned out pretty stunning. So cool. And then we added a place for our saying. And then that one will stand up because it's been reinforced with some paper. I think I still might put a couple of sequins on there. <laughs> so we've got a whole bunch of different ideas there. If you want to, you can spray the back. Get an overall. Actually, this one's not sprayed. This one is Copic colored. Or you can color it on the front. Or spray it from the back. And I think, yeah, this one we also sprayed very lightly. And so we're bringing back in pieces of things that we've made in the past. So if you like some of those things, go back and watch our previous videos that we have those in. And in case somebody was wondering, we've got, this is the set that we've been using today by Gina K through Thick and Thin. Let me get you a piece of white here. So you get that gorgeous flower we've been using, that really cool leaf and a couple of sayings. Fantastical. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I love bringing you Free Play Friday where I teach you some things or I remind you of things you already knew, that kind of stuff. If you have ideas for that, um, I take ideas from the patron group, so get in on that. Then you can have a little bit more control over what's going on in the group and the community. And our sale is tomorrow, so don't forget about that. If you're a patron, it's tonight in our patron group, so don't come here looking for it. It'll be in the patron group. Tomorrow will be right here on this YouTube channel at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. 
Oh, and Penny said, by store, I mean resale page. So here's a just a really quick rundown. We have a community page on Facebook. No drama, no commitment. You just come in, be inspired, have fun, hang out. Um, we'll, we could talk about stuff that goes on in here, whatnot. Everyone is um, welcome. We have the resale group, which is where I put used, gently used and new stuff in that between the sales. So like the two weeks in between, I pop stuff in there that you can purchase and put in your bin. And then we have pre-orders in the resale group so that you can also pre-order the new stuff that you see continuously coming out by Tim Holtz and Sizzix and Gina K, stuff like that. If you want to get into the patron group where you get your 10% off discount in the store and your 12 free digis a month and all kinds of other fun things that are going to be happening and stuff that goes on in there, um, different challenges, different um, projects, that kind of stuff, then you want to go to patreon.com backslash quality crafts and join that. And then all of this links to this um, YouTube channel so that it is all linked together and it's all considered quality crafts community. If you have any questions about that, just leave me a question down below here. Um, all the products that I used today or a few of them that I didn't get around to using will be in the description box below. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.